it's here, it's here. Let's see what we got. We got five different blades here. We got the four-in-one pull pruner saw, string trimmer head, tool kit, a handle, saw chain. We know whose logo that is. Shoulder strap, string trimmer deflector, a bar, and here it is. That's what we've all been waiting for. We're already losing parts. This part fell off already. Look at that. A genuine Honda. Wow. It's even genuinely crooked. They got the logo genuinely crooked. Four stroke. But is it really a Honda? Found a couple more pieces in the box. And in the other box we have, here's the chainsaw head. Here's the hedge trimmer attachment. This looks like the first half of the shaft that mounts to the motor. And this is probably the weed eater attachment. Take a look at the manuals. Well here's the manual, look at that. Looks just like a Honda manual to me. Let's compare it to a real Honda manual. Wow, almost identical. It's only missing one word right here. Let's try this side. Well they got that side correct. The left side is word for word. It's a perfect copy. So they got one side of the manual right, but they left off Honda up here. We better tell them that they left off Honda. Well the upper shaft comes completely assembled. The throttle handle is on here, the clutch is mounted to the shaft, and the clutch housing is on. Clutch is already on the machine. All we gotta do is stick this on here and screw down the four screws. Hook up the throttle wire, the two kill wires, they all drop right in, self-explanatory, and you're in business. Don't forget to put some oil in it, and you can go straight to work, folks. Well, make sure you check the oil and put the right kind of gas in it. Purge bulb works good. Let's see how many pulls it takes to start this thing. it all the way down. It needs to be a foot longer if an American's going to use it. It'd be good for doing tall grass. Otherwise, I got to use it like this. Well, let's see what it'll do. Handle's not on very tight because next thing I knew it was upside down and still going. So there you go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look at that. I was running it upside down. It came loose so fast I was running it upside down. Oh man. Well apparently it was just the combi attachment that came loose. So that was probably my fault. Let's try it again. trimmer head did some damage but it did crap out. Let's try the blade attachment. A little bit scared of this thing but let's see what it does.
took was one Blackberry hanging up on this, bending the cover in, and the blade shattered it. So we're about done weed whacking. Let's try something else. Let's try the hedge trimmers. We better make sure this gearbox is in usable shape before we use it. the saw attachment. view back. some bigger material. upside down. Let's see how it does upside down.
just like they said, can't tell you how long it's going to last, but it does work. Started right up, ran pretty smooth, definitely a little bit quieter, definitely a little bit heavier and bulkier, not nearly as balanced as the Combi is. It wants to sit upside down as the natural position. It naturally wants to flip upside down. It's real top heavy compared to the steel. The handle's still broken, but I used it anyways. That's not too bad of a problem because you can always do this. You can get these four-way clamps off Amazon for like 10 bucks and clamp on a piece of conduit and you got yourself an extension handle. Here's that extra handle attachment. Just a four-way clamp. Get it off Amazon for 10 bucks. Clamps right on and gives you a nice extension handle. This is a great option. Well, the attachment isn't quite as good as the Combi. It has a knob that clamps on, a spring flap here. This is what caused the attachment to start rotating and the motor to start running upside down. You gotta push in up here on a little spring tab and then the tool comes out. This little hole right here catches a little arm inside. And that's supposed to keep your tool from rotating. There we go, we got it. And then this is supposed to clamp down on the shaft. It works, but the combi is superior. Here we got both shafts side by side. Combi on the left, knockoff on the right. Steel uses a square shaft to couple up to its motor. The knockoff uses a spline shaft. I'm sure the spline shaft is just fine. But the outside diameter of the tubes are the same. You could stick the knockoff attachment in the combi, but the shafts don't align, so you can't use it. But you could put it in there. You just can't use it. The string attachment didn't last very long. I broke a tab off. Now that the tab's broken off, it won't stay together. So the string attachment's going in the trash the first day. The hedges were okay. It would get a small job done. I threw it at those blackberries pretty hard, and it seemed to hold up. The steel attachment is much better. But it feels pretty good and strong. It's not as cheap and as trashy as I thought it was going to be. It's adjustable. That's kind of nice. Seems to lock in pretty good. The cutter head's pretty decent. Shaft wants to fall out. You got to make sure you don't lose your shaft when you tip it upside down. There goes the shaft. It will. The shaft will fall out on you. Feels strong though. Feels like you could bash someone's head in with it. It's not too chintzy, not nearly as chintzy as I thought it was going to be. The hole size for the attachment is the same as a steel, and the nut that goes on is the same size, but a different thread pitch. So you can't interchange the nuts, but you can interchange the attachments. This brush cutter blade is the thinnest blade I've ever seen. It's literally sheet metal. Any thinner than it would be a can of pop. The saw attachment performed pretty well. Typical cheap saws, they do loosen up with use. But the oiler seemed to work, the tensioner did work, it tightened the chain right up, the bar stud and nut seemed to lock on just fine, and it cut just fine. Again, can't tell you how long it's going to last, but it does work. They're not lying to you, folks. Well, here's a look at the gear inside the hedger attachment. You can see it's a standard gear and rod design. The center gear is supported by the screw hole here, which goes through the sleeve and the cover. So all that needs to go on to support the center gear, or your gear will wobble the heck out. The grease sucks. It's almost hardened. That was one of the issues upon startup. It really didn't want to go, mainly because this grease was set up. I'm going to scrape the grease out and put new grease in. Well, I did find one thing that beats steel, and that's a grease fitting on these. That's pretty slick. That makes life easy. It's got another one for the shaft rotation. Here's the chainsaw attachment. It's your standard bar and chain, and your most basic groove for it to sit in, your most basic tensioner. The oiler and reservoir seem to be fine. The reservoir didn't leak, and the oiler did fine. You can see it shot out plenty of oil. The bar is held on by the 10 millimeter nut and this area right here. This is all you get to mount the bar on. Because of that, it's a little bit shaky, and that does reduce your performance in a cut. The shakier, the worse it is. The shakiness is likely due to the small mounting surface. That's not very much holding this on. But it did work, and it did get the job done. Another thing I noticed is this bar is in bad shape. It's not square at all. It is not dressed very well. When you rub your finger down it, it feels like rubbing your finger down asphalt. It's that bad. Super rough and nowhere near square. We'll give it a few passes with the hand bar dresser and I bet you that'll make a big difference too. Let's try leaving it upside down for an hour or two. See what happens when you leave it upside down. Well, it's been two hours and I don't see any puddles any wet spots or any leaks at all. That's pretty impressive. And the weigh-in for the Honda is 13 and a half. A little bit heavy. 
and the weigh in for the steel is 11.2 almost two pounds lighter and when you factor in I got the extra handle on here it's definitely two pounds lighter but it did have the power to keep up I wasn't unimpressed with the power. I wouldn't say it had an overdose of power, but it had significant power. It had enough to satisfy me, so that's fine by me. Like I say, not exactly a powerhouse, but it got the job done. It could definitely keep up with the steel combi, the 131. But now that I've seen the 50, I kind of want to try the 35 and the 25. Wonder how small you can go and still run something. So there's your next video, the 25 and the 35. Stay tuned.